in Champaign-Urbana. It's that time again. Time for March Madness as eight of the top 12 rated teams are here. Here for the drama of the 1988 Boys Class A State Basketball Championship. Hello again, everybody. I'm Frank Bassoni, and welcome to this great tournament. 468 teams started in Class A this season. Eight remain, the Elite Eight, and they include numbers one, two, and three in the state of Illinois. In our first quarterfinal matchup today, game one, the Panthers of Pena, 25 and three, challenge the Beardstown Tigers, 26 and four. Then it's the Cardinals of Forreston, 28 and two, trying to outfly the Eagles of St. Elmo, 29 and two. And now for more on our first game, here are my colleagues, Art Kimball and Coach Ed Butkovich. Thank you very much, Frank, and a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Assembly Hall, another great Class A State Boys Basketball Tournament. Ed, good to be working with you again. That's a place to be here in March, isn't it? Absolutely, and we should have a great one. There's uh, not an odds-on favorite this year, is there? Well, I don't know if there's an odds-on favorite. I think everybody's looking to the lower bracket, but right. I think these two teams right here are capable of winning it. Uh, we've got a good matchup. There are similar teams and uh, style to play, and I think it's going to be a great afternoon. Beardstown has been here before. Last year, the fourth place finisher. Last year is good. They've got the experience. They come back, and maybe they can do the whole thing this year. Well, we'll see what happens in Pena. First time they've ever played in the Assembly Hall in the state tournament. Well, no, I think they've been here before. I think they were here in about uh, seven or eight years ago. I'm not positive. But Sweet I think 16, but not the Assembly Hall, I don't believe. Well, I think we'd have to look at right yeah, now. Well, we're going to be in trouble right off the bat, aren't we? I know we are. What about uh, the rest of the field overall? It's not a particularly big field physically. Well, there's not a lot of big guys, but I, I think there are some good rebounders in the tournament, some awful good scorers. And I think three-point play is going to come into effect this year. We're going to enjoy it, I believe. I think we are, too. One of your network sponsors is American Dairy Association of Illinois. You bake fresh salmon at 4.50 for 30 minutes. Dear, it's 3.50 for 40 minutes. 4.50 for 30. 3.50 for 40. 3.50 for 40. It is 4.50 for 30. 3.50 for 40. Hello, Kroger. We need help. Need help with cooking tips, storage advice, or recipe hints? Our toll-free meat line is staffed by experts. Just give them a call. Terrific salmon. Like I said, 3.50 for 20 minutes. No, like I said, 3.50 for 20. No, I said. Hello, Kroger. It's me again. The Kroger toll-free meat line, because a little help can make a difference. The coach of the Painter Panthers. Good to be here, huh, Charlie? Yes, it is, Art. This, of course, is the culmination. This in capsule form. What's been the key for your club this year? I guess dedication to the game during the offseason over the past three years. I think we're fundamentally sound, and I hope the team continues to play good defense like they have all year. We're up one thing between Ed Butkovich and I. This is your first appearance in the Assembly Hall, per se, isn't it? Yes, it is. You've been in the Sweet 16, however. Yes, we was in the 16 two years ago, Sweet 16. Beardstown has to concern you. They got some size, not a lot, but uh, enough. Yes, sir, they got a lot of size, and of course, they were here last year. Your super sectional victory was a big one, a key ball game, certainly, to get here, but uh, you were no, no better than even going into that one, were you? Gus Cole was ranked a little above us, and uh, they certainly had a good ball club, very quick, a very aggressive ball club, and they played an outstanding ball game against us. This tournament's going to be a battle of quickness, it would appear. Yes, it does look like it'll be a lot of quick teams up here. Charlie, good luck to you. Thanks a lot, Art. Charlie Strasberger, the coach of the Paint of Panthers. What a year they've had. And let's get Bob Hembro squaring away here. Second year in a row for you, Bob. Good to see you. Well, we're glad to be back. Normal, I guess, but we're really happy to be back. Your Beardstown club uh, didn't get a lot of value here this year, but you're used to that. Yeah, we didn't start out too well. We were five and three at one point in the season, and uh, had been beaten bad a couple times. Uh, we just didn't play well early. The obvious question uh, for our statewide audience: in comparison with the club of a year ago. Well, you know, I don't get around much. I I kind of stick around home pretty close. Uh, we had some real good teams in our area. I tell you, Pittsfield had an outstanding team, and I'm sure Pinckneyville and Watsika. I uh, know Payne is outstanding, so there's good teams every year in Illinois. Well, you got that winning tradition. That means a great deal, doesn't it? 
Well, we try to win. We don't always, but we sure try every time. What about Pena? We didn't get a scout them. I didn't. Uh, as far as I know, uh, you know, they have an outstanding team, outstanding shooters, really a good bunch of kids. Bob, good luck to you. Good to see you here again. Thank you very much. Bob Himbro, the skipper of Beer Sound, and one of your network sponsors is Country Companies. The day Tom bought his new car, he knew it would start declining in value, month after month. So he added the keeper coverage to his country company's auto insurance. Two years later, the car was total, unrepairable. But instead of giving him only the used car value, country companies bought him a brand new one, same make and model, even though it cost more than the original. The keeper for just a few dollars more. You've got the country company. Important information from Abel Vault and Monument. You purchase a family memorial only once, and you do so out of love and fond remembrance. At Abel Monument, we stand for what people care to remember, and that's why we feature Sealmark Rock of Ages memorials, knowing that you'll receive the finest quality product and fairest price, backed by a full guarantee. It is important to see what you're buying, and at Abel, you'll find over 500 monuments and memorials in stock. Because you care, we care. Abel Monument Company, Canton, Deacon, and Peoria. This is the place to be. It's March Madness in Illinois. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Frank Bassoni. Welcome to the IHSA Boys Class A Tournament, the Elite Eight. In our first game today, the Pena Panthers are 25 and three, who eliminated Tuscola in the Decatur Super Sectional, faced the Beardstown Tigers, who are playing an encore performance here. They're 25 and four, and took out Pittsfield at the McCombs Super. Beardstown coached by Bob Hembro, and Pena coached by Charles Strasberger. Beardstown, of course, from Cass County, and Pena from Christian County. We'll talk about these teams, but first, let's meet the players and coaches, Steve Adams. moments away now from our national anthem, Bill Olson singing. Oh, Introducing the head coach in his 14th season, Bob Hembro. And now the assistant coaches, Mike Lewis and Gary Dalpiaz. And now the players. Number 15, a 5'7 junior, Pat Patterson. Number 20, a 5'7 senior, Jeff Schultz. Number 22, a 5'9 junior, Jason Bruckschmidt. 
number 23, a six-foot senior, Rob Newenham. Number 41, a 6'1 senior, Sean Hembro. Number 42, a 6'2 junior, Larry Moore. And number 44, a 6'5 junior, Chris Kramblitz. And now the starting lineup. At one forward, a 6'2 senior, 25, Chris Fritz. He averages eight points and five rebounds a game. At the other forward, a 6'4 senior, number 40, Rob Force. Averaging over nine points per contest. At center, a 6'5 senior, 45, Terry Morrow. A horse with a game at 245 pounds. At one guard, a 6'5 junior, number 32, Joe Hamilton. And shoot the three, averaging 13 and a half. And at the other guard, a 6'3 senior, 43, Scott Vermillion. And 10 in the Super, 6 on the season. Those are the Tigers of Beardstown High School. And now, let's meet the Panthers of Pena High School, entering this game with a record of 25 wins and 3 losses. First, the head coach of Pena High School in his third season, Charles Strasberger. The assistant coaches of Pena, Mike Bender, Brad Byers, and Harry Curtis. And now the players. Number 12, a 5'11 sophomore, Gary Tidwell. Number 20, a 5'8 junior, Travis Sims. Number 22, a 5'10 sophomore, Todd Holthouse. Number 34, a 6'1 sophomore, Jeff Mysick. Number 42, a 5'11 junior, Jeff Curtis. Number 44, a 5'11 senior, Dave Woolard. And number 52, a 6'3 sophomore, Dave Eddy. And now the starting lineup. At one forward, a 6'3 senior, number 40, Kevin Mysick. Mysick shoots 61% field goal on the season. At the other forward, a 6'2 senior, 24, Doug Moss. A good rebounder, averaging over six boards a game. At center, a 6'4 junior, number 50, Greg Pullman. Strong at 210, seven points a game. At one guard, a 6'1 senior, number 14, Mark Heaton. Heaton with 18 in the super sectional. And at the other guard, a 6'4 senior, number 30, Tom Funneman. An All-State are averaging 17 and a half points a game. Ladies and gentlemen, the Panthers of Pena High School. And now, the officials for this first quarterfinal game, Bill Spriggs of Kankakee and Rick Preston of Moments. We'll be back with our first game in a moment. One of your network sponsors is Case IH. Get ready for more power. Magnum power. Magnum means more. More from totally new, bigger engines with 8% more displacement than the leading competitor. Delivering from 130 to 195 PTO horsepower. New engines, plus new cabs and a power shift transmission. All Magnum. Magnum tractors. Tractors that will do more. Hey, Camelon. Got a minute? Sure. I uh, saw what you did for my neighbor. Over Most there. people come to Camelon because of the work we've done for their neighbors. Tell me what Besides you feeding your lawn, our people are specially trained to control the weeds and insects that can damage it. This kind of service is what makes Camelon different. And it's why we can guarantee you a healthier, more beautiful lawn or your money back. Excuse me, Camelon, you got a minute? Be right with you. Call now for Camelon Care. We give our people better training, they give you a better lawn. The fans are ready, and so are we. I'm Frank Bassoni, along with Coach Ed Butkovich, along with Art Kimball and Jim Albrecht, all here at the Assembly Hall. Frank, before we get going, this to set the record straight. Ed Butkovich was right. <laughs> Pena was here in the Assembly Hall in 81. They lost in the quarterfinals under Coach John Blackburn. Thank you, Art. I'll take that Coke after the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Town is in the orange. They're trimmed in black. They're an independent. Last year, they were fourth in the state. Pena 
Mid-State Conference, Royal Blue and White. And with the ball is Pena. Mark Heaton starts, and you'll watch Beardstown. They will probably play a zone defense to start. On the low block, Holman missed. Meistick rebounds and scores. That's Pena's trademark, strong on the board. Get that offensive rebound and put it in. You're going to see some banging on the boards in this game. Kevin Meistick, number 40, a 6'3" senior knocked in the first deuce this is joe hamilton and he can shoot it out there terry morrow likes to roam the baseline 40 is robbed force morrow comes outside he was here last year with a shot no Pullman at 6-4 rebounding inside pena on the move pena in white they will push it up Pena's 25 and 3 on the season heaton and funneman their guards their big scores Heaton is 14. 24 is Doug Moss there. The guards take the ball to the hole pretty good. They're good drivers. This Funneman is 6'4 and an all-stater. Likes to penetrate. Heaton on the baseline, double team. Look at the defense coach by Beardstown. Good ball. Good job. Heaton outside, yes. Good outside shooter. We can put it up. Payne has got the early momentum for Zip, and remember, we have the three-point shot this season. Look for Heaton to go inside, too, on offense. He's a good uh, low-post player. Morrow comes out off the block, and Joe Hamilton's on the baseline. Hamilton's a guard, but he's 6'5". He can see over. Inside force. Puts it home. Good move. Good pass. Rob Force at 6'4". He was ineligible the second semester last year, but he started earlier, and again, this looks is like, extended pressure. Looks like a 2-2-1 right there that time. Moss comes out to help. Skip pass, Funneman. Set shot. Funneman missed the three. Hamilton snapped the rebound out of the air. Four to two, Pena. Six minutes and five seconds to go. The first quarterfinal. Forreston and St. Elmo will follow. Fritz has the ball tipped away. Vermillion. Nice hustle on the rebound. Pullman got it. Two rebounds for him. Went a long way after that one, though. The son of the principal, Heaton, fires. Four points for Mark Heaton, and Pena leads by that many. Took his ball off there, went to the hole right there off the side of the key, and put that good jumper in. I say the guards can penetrate real well. Let's see what Pena's doing defensively. Looks Look. like they're either in a 1-2-2 two, two, or maybe a 3-2 zone right there. We'll see if Hamilton, 32, and Vermillion shoot over it. Morrow is free from 15. Nice board, Fritz once. Hamilton has it in the paint. And Pena comes out with the ball as Tom Funneman gives to Mark Heaton. Bridgetown sets up. It's a zone. 2-3 set, essentially. Funneman's open. Wide open for three. Missed. Funneman's tried two threes. He'll try another. Ball tipped away by Beardstown. The Tigers are a team with something to prove, and it's to themselves. That's Bob Hembro, and he thinks they could have done better than fourth last year. He'd like to do better than that this year. A lot of people would like to have fourth. <laughs> 460 some. <laughs> Heaton's open. Bang. Right now, that looks like his favorite shot. He averages 16, and he's got six. 4.43 to play, first quarter. Pena by six. Beardstown needs a, a deuce here. There's a pass that Force tries to track down in camp. And Pena has the ball and the lead. This is the best start that Pena's had in the last two or three ball games. And Beardstown knows it and wants to stop the action. We'll be back at the Assembly Hall. One of your network sponsors is Illinois Pork Producers. <laughs> There's something about them you don't know. You know they're old favorites. You know they're delicious. And you know they're made with white meat. What you don't know is that the white meat they're made with isn't chicken. It's pork. Because even an old favorite can use a new twist. For too many years, there's been a missing link in America's grain marketing chain. But now, the Archer Daniels Midland Company and Growmark Incorporated have joined to close that gap. It's a new company called ADM Growmark, and it provides a direct link between your Growmark elevator and the global markets of ADM. As a cooperative grain marketing system, ADM Growmark is committed to building bigger, more reliable markets. So ask your Growmark elevator about ADM Growmark, the company with worldwide marketing muscle. 
Haynes Panthers off to a lead. They average 67 points a game. Their opponents 52. Beardstown averages 61 a game. Their opponents only 47. But Pena has the ball and the lead. In the sectional, Pena was behind 10 points in the first quarter in both games. In the sectional. And they got Gary Tidwell off the bench early, but not yet in this one. But watch that happen. Nice pass inside Fritz. And the rebound comes off. It's of Tom Funneman. Pena has got the bit in their mouth, you can tell. They can't afford to miss those uh, easy shots in there. Beardstown's got to get one down right here now. Two turnovers on Pena in a row gives Beardstown the ball back. And you know the Assembly Hall experience that Beardstown has hasn't shown in the early going yet. Not yet. It may. Inside Terry Morrow. Fakes and steps in and has the ball slapped away from him. Had the right idea, but you see that guy slipped down from that weak side on defense, and he caused that ball to go out of bounds. Good defensive play, Pena's part. His coach, Morrow's coach, says when there's big crowds, he wants the ball every time. Well, the big crowd's here. There's Hamilton missing. Is he going to get it? Yeah. Joe Hamilton at 6'5", just a junior. Fritz steps in and is held on the move. Foul is on Greg Pullman, number 50. First foul of the ball game at the 348 mark in the first quarter. And it hasn't been anything short of physical either. Nice pass inside, taken away by Funneman. Quick hands by Tom Funneman. Keaton, the point guard there, number 14. His dad is Barry. He coached Pena from 67 to 72. He's the principal. Keaton fires. And follows. Steps in. Long rebound to the Tigers. Keaton did a good job of following this shot there. He wasn't blocked out on the side. He just went to the boards. He got the rebound. And, of course, that again, they lost it. Beardstown's been cold. Looks for the basket. That's Scott Vermillion at 6-3 with Hamilton 6-5 outside. They go 6-4, 6-5, 6-3 inside. Overall, Pena's got good size. Foul line pop. Around and out, and Doug Moss with a nose for the ball. Pena hurry, spun him and right. He loaded up but didn't. Now Funneman chases the baseline, and there's a penetration by Heaton we were talking about. Good block by Joe Hamilton. Usually the side. ball over a 6'5 guy out there sometimes. Bob Hembro says, we're known for watermelons, catfish, duck hunting, and basketball. Inside. Great pass by Hamilton. Rob Force got it down. And then this ball, they were noted for the strike. <laughs> That's right. Eight to four game, 2.23. First quarter of play. Funneman. Tipped up and in, and Terry Morrow actually hit it in. I think Morrow scored that bucket, didn't he? Terry Morrow knocked it in with his left hand of Beardstown in the paint of basket. One of the paint of players will get credit for it. Unfortunately. Terrible break for Beardstown, but Payne is smiling. Hamilton outside, snaps the ball, down low to force, miss. Great pass. Steps in again. This two layup. Morrow rebounds, and he was held. I guess fortunate they got that. Pullman, I believe. Fortunate they had that last foul because I think they had a bucket there. Should have made the first one. Great pass by Hamilton again. Kevin Meisick. Coach, let's see if we can see Terry uh, Morrow. Like it looks like he's blocked out pretty good on that side. The guy's got to just unfortunately don't get the left hand on it. They had to tip it in. For Payne, Greg Pullman is out. Gary Tidwell, 12, their super sub is in. Must have given the field goal to Meissig. Not Pullman. Field goal to Meissig. You know, that's not feel like that. <laughs> yeah. Hamilton's outside. There's a three. He missed it. Air ball. Early in the season, Beardstown had a 16 three tries in one game, only made one. They said then, Bob Hembro said, we went away from our three game. Beardstown shooting two for 12 in the early going. Not a very good start. Good inside move. Great pass. Mysick stepped in and scored, and Pena has barged to a 12 to 4 lead. Kevin Mysick with that two. I don't know, was that Moss uh, assist on that, I think? Great pass. Morrow's pulled out away from the basket to Chris Fritz. Beardstown looks uncomfortable against Pena's defense. Morrow. This is a team with Assembly Hall experience and could put a run together. They go to Vermillion, low down. They're a little short with their shots. 
See, the point man went all the way in there and got that rebound. Bunneman's playing a point on defense, but he went in on that rebound and got it. They go at the boards extremely well. Charles knows for the ball. That was Strasburger calling out the defense. Looks like a man to man. Looks like they're going to hold for one shot here. 33 seconds. Funneman with the basketball. He's an all stater. He had 19 in the super sectional win. Kano with an eight point lead, and there's the clock. First quarter. They'd like one shot. They'd like a 10 point lead. Mark Keaton. Beardstown in orange comes out. Double team the ball. Funneman coming around the screen. Funneman moves with five, shoots with four, missed. Morrow rebounds with three. Can Beardstown get a shot off? No. At the end of one quarter, at the assembly hall, at the boys' class A, Pena in the lead over Beardstown. One of your network sponsors, the American Dairy Association of Illinois. information from Abel Vault and Monument. You purchase a family memorial only once, and you do so out of love and fond remembrance. At Abel Monument, we stand for what people care to remember, and that's why we feature Sealmark Rock of Ages memorials, knowing that you'll receive the finest quality product and fairest price backed by a full guarantee. It is important to see what you're buying, and at Abel, you'll find over 500 monuments and memorials in stock. Because you care, we care. Abel Monument Company, Canton, Pekin, and Peoria. Pena from South Central Illinois, their third Class A appearance in the Sweet 16, their fourth all-time, they're located south of Decatur, have just had a quarter that's given them a sip of vintage confidence. Very, very impressive this first quarter. I think rebounding and defense has been a real factor in this first quarter for Pena. Field goal two for 13, Beardstown 15%, Pena 6-14, 43%, and Pena with the ball in white. Pena pushes it up, and that's Gary Tidwell, number 12, a 5'11 sophomore. He had 25 points in the super sectional, including 16 of 17 free throws. Very cool for a sophomore. In a tough situation. He can't put the three-pointer up. He looked at it there. Now he penetrates. He's inside. Gary Tidwell makes it 14 to 4. Pena. Good fake. He gave a ball fake on that and went up for that jump shot. Great move. Well, you were here in 76 and 84. You'd like to have a player like that sitting alongside you. You always like to have one like that. Terry Morrow is outside with the on the left wing, now goes into the middle. Remember, he's 6'5 and about 240. There he is there. He's got about a five-footer. Still can't get it. He steps in this time and missed again. But it's a two-shot foul on Pena. And Beardstown will try to cash at the foul line. They only scored two in the early going. They're early in the ball game again. Beardstown did get it inside. They didn't score. They've got to get those. They had the opportunities early. They didn't drop for them. They need these free throws. Morrill, a 69% foul shooter. Beardstown has been held at two field goals in the entire ball game. They're fortunate to be as close as they are, really. Defense has uh, bailed them out. They were three down with 17 seconds to go in their sectional game. And they pulled out a win at the Super against McComb in front of nearly 5,000 there. It's six minutes, 45 seconds to go in the first half. The defense by Beardstown looks man to man. Looks like now. They're in a man, man right now. Tidwell, a three. He missed. The rebound inside is missed. Doug Moss grabbed it. And a foul this time on the Tigers of Beardstown. Two offensive rebounds again. Beardstown might have a little size on him, but I tell you what, that Pena Del Ball Club really goes to board. Great timing. Pena has lost to Breeze Modern Day, Jerseyville, and Brooklyn Lovejoy by a total of seven points. Their three losses. Funneman, a three. Bang. The first three. About a 23-footer. <laughs> a three in any league. 
He's one out of three from the range, and it was a quick 17 to five advantage now for the Panthers. Beardstown punches it into Vermillion, That's whose nice. layup won't go. Rebound is up and oh, missed Lord. by Chris Tramblett, and Tramblett, 6'5", junior, with a great house on hand here at Butkovich, enjoying the first game. They're enjoying it. The painted people are enjoying it. Beardstown's not enjoying it right now, but their Beardstown got two offensive rebounds again and couldn't put it up and then end up with a foul. Really a frustrating experience early for the Tigers. This is Tidwell, but there's a long way to play. Long way to go, but I know they'd like to start all over again. Tidwell. Get one down here, it's going to be tough for him. Now, uh, Tidwell and Funneman come outside. Heaton's on the wing right. Funneman, another three. This one way short. And the rebound of Vermillion of the Tigers. Beardstown needs four or five hoops here. They're going to have to strengthen up their defense there. They've been playing pretty good defense. Their offense is just sputtered there. Vermillion finds Tramblett open. He missed it. And the reserve is... This is his first shot. Chris Tramblett. 6'5", junior, and a foul on the Tigers. Second foul on Terry Morrow over the back. I hope they start, don't, don't start uh, picking up fouls, just frustration, because that's what can happen with this. They're down a little bit right now. They've got to get perked up. They've shot 46% for the season from the field goal on the uh, year, and, and you would think that uh, pretty soon they'll get untracked in that category. Well, I'm sure they will. Tidwell's outside. Look at Beardstown sink back, but they had to pay on Funneman's three. Tidwell, the sophomore out the top, Heaton now. Tidwell three. Vermillion has gone inside and gotten a pair of boards. Canis 17 in Beardstown five at the five minute mark in the first half. Joe Hamilton can score and he spins the ball inside. And Rob Force was blocked and fouled. Great pass by Hamilton again. Say what, he's going to make somebody an outstanding point guard in college. And that's another season in high school to come. Yes, it is. May not be important now, and maybe later, gentlemen. Heaton just picked up his second foul. He's a key player for pain and no question. Force, the left-hander, puts it in. Watch how Hamilton sees over the zone. Uh, at 6'5", he's got that. You know, it goes up. Nice pass. There it is. Beautiful. And a pair of free throws by Rob Force pulls Beardstown within 10. That's a third or fourth pass that Hamilton's made down inside through that defense. Great pair of eyes. Coach Strasburger is coaching Kentucky and at the college level before coaching in Illinois at Macon, now at Pena. Tidwell goes by Morrow on the right. Beardstown covers up. Heaton on the right wing and Tidwell exchange outside. The guards still penetrate. Skip pass nearly stolen. Funneman a three. Boom. Doesn't that bring the painted crowd up? Oh, Lord. Twenty to seven. Funneman, a 17 and a half point per game guy, is two out of five from the three point range. Morrow. Morrow a three out of his range and the rebound off Cramblett and then off front of and out of bounds to Beardstown. I know that you know, Frank, but I, I'm sure that you do that uh, Tidwell uh, is the stepson of uh, Gerald Strasburger. And uh, Charlie's uh, mother is up from Kentucky this week, so she's enjoying her first state tournament in Illinois, I know. Charlie played basketball at Western Kentucky. Beardstown shooting two of 21, make it three of 21 as Joe Hamilton hit. Unbelievably chilly game. They're only down by 11. They're still in it. Only four minutes to go and a half, and they've only got nine points. But I, a player can bring him back. Hamilton can. He's brought him back this year. Funneman lobs into the block. Moss is held down there, and the ball's knocked out of bounds. And I think it was a break for Beardstown. They didn't get called for a foul on that one. Bob Hembro looks on. In 14 years at the Tigers, he's won 278 games. Payne has been uh, noted for their special plays on out-of-bounds. Right here is one that they go to. Funneman's a good guy to go to. They line up three guys along the uh, free throw line and put Funneman on the opposite side, and then they pop him to the corner to make that pass out there. Most of the time, we get a three-pointer. That time, just a two. A 6'4 guard, very versatile player and a great one. But did you notice when he went up, the guy was right in his face and he went right up in him. He oh. squares right up. <laughs> One of the fellows along the line here said where Funneman shoots him from, they only got him four <laughs> instead of three. Vermillion kicks the ball around the zone into Cramblett. 
Chris Framblett, a transfer from Quincy, knocked it in. He's been coming off the bench the last eight or ten ball games. Has been doing an excellent job for Beardstown. He had 11 in the Super. It's an 11-point game at 3:10 to play, first half. Frank Bassoni, along with Coach Ed Butkovich, Art Kimball, and Jim Albrecht. Funneman again, missed the three. Good rebound by Framblett at 6-5. Now Hamilton and Beardstown likes the pace a little slower than Pena in the early part of the game. Fritz. Good pass by Fritz. Fritz now goes to the block. Good defense by Funneman, tipping it away. Funneman's all over the place. He's a senior. He had 19 points in the super sectional. There's timeout on the court with Pena in the lead by 11. We're back in a moment. One of your network sponsors is Country Company. With the arrival of the Morrison's new baby, the flexibility of Country Company's universal life insurance is a big help. I know it's hard to believe, but you can change the amount of your coverage, even skip payments if you need to. But why Country Companies? They've always delivered what they promised. You've got the country behind you. With Country Companies Universal Life. You've got the Country Companies. At Bob Grimm Chevrolet, we figure it this way. It's not how far apart we are on the central Illinois map that counts. It's how close we are on the deal. We'll give a little more, take a little less at Bob Grimm Chevrolet. So wherever you're coming from, Bob Grimm Chevrolet is always the closest. Because when it comes to price, we're going to meet you more than halfway. Bob Grimm Chevrolet, your give a little dealer in Morton. The Pena Panthers who eliminated Tuscola to get here, 73 to 67, have the second quarter advantage over Beardstown by 11. Coach, what do you tell your Tigers if you're a Beardstown? They still have to be patient, can't afford that. Tidwell at 15 years old, stepped in front of the pass, goes all the way down and is fouled. He drew that foul. You see, he stopped, give that little ball fake, got the guy in the air and then went up into him. Excellent play. Charles Strasburger enjoyed that. Great interception right here. Puts the ball behind his back. Look at that. Great move. This is the stepson of the coach. Averages 8.4 points a game, an 81% foul shooter. Does that indicate practice? Not bad for a sophomore. Not bad for anybody. Shane Hembro, nephew of the coach, comes on for the Tigers. 6-1 senior. One shot, gentlemen. Beardstown looking for that right combination. Both have good followings in the assembly hall, as you might expect. Tidwell, a pair. Painter really follows their ball plus. Four for Tidwell. Hamilton puts it in gear to the right. His pass knocked away by Funneman and picked off by the Panthers. Long arms of Funneman again. He's six foot three. Uh, last time Painter went into a two-three zone. Fourth turnover on Beardstown, and I wonder if Hamilton will look to shoot a little more. Keaton. Funneman's wide open for the three. Well, well, he's going to put it up there. Running rebound to Rob Force. And the Tigers take a glance at the board with 2.05. It's 24 to 11, Pena. Beardstown in one of their coldest games of the season has another one picked away. This one by Kevin Meisick. They tried to force that one in there. Meisick anticipated it. Tidwell has it. Panthers a step quicker. Right now they are. Their hands are active out there. Funneman matched up with Vermillion. 6'4 and 6'3 backs in. They haven't done it yet, but sometimes they run a little three-guard weave out there sometimes. Minute and a half. First half. Eaton gets between two players and is fouled. Eaton forced that a little bit and got the first one. It's a two-shot foul, too. But there was that penetration again. They've got Beardstown playing man-to-man, -man, and right now they can dictate what they want to do offensively. Beardstown's having a tough time because they're just a little bit slower. They have to play man-to-man. -man. And being behind this much of the game, they have to go to that defense. Heaton shoots free throws at 69%. He has seven points in the game. Mark Heaton with another. A miss and a whistle immediately. 
a lane violation. It's on Shane Hembro, I believe, and that's a substitute throw for Pena. A lane violation against Tuscola in the sectional might have been a turning point in the ball game. After Tuscola went ahead, they missed a free throw and had a lane violation, and the player made the next two for Pena to put them one point back up. Hamilton calls the play. Chris Cramlett is 44 on the right. Here's the ball loose. Pena was in a little matchup that last time. Pena likes to change their defense. Yes, they do. Charlie does an excellent job there. Hamilton penetrates, goes inside. Hembro missed. Rebound, Meisick. Point blank layups. They're just not going down for the Tigers. And, and Pena knows it. They're going to take a little clock. Unfortunately for Beardown, everything is going wrong. And for Pena right now, everything's going right. You notice Putnam and Savvy there looked over at the bench immediately. So what do you want, Coach? Under the minute mark. Pressure by the Beardstown Tigers, double teaming the ball. Half a minute, first half. Pena in command with the ball. They'd like one shot, and they'll be all smiles at halftime. And the Tigers of Beardstown will have some work to do. Tidwell way away from the basket for under 15 seconds. Funneman, the money man with the shooting. Double teamed with eight. Tidwell fires a three. Rebound tip buzzed by Moss. Next rebound, Mysick inside, and a foul on the Tigers at three seconds. When Tidwell went up for the shot, Funneman went for the rebound. Moss was in there for the rebound, and Mysick was in there for the rebound. Travis Sims comes on as you look. There he goes again. He goes up strong right now. Mysick. Yeah. Heaton with two fouls, good coaching move. They take him out with three seconds left in the half. No, no risk of taking number three. Travis Sims comes in a 5'8", junior number 20. This is Mysick, and he missed. That three misses in a row by Pena at the foul line. Six points for Mysick. You know, there was a minute ago he tried to get heat now, but he missed that second free right. throw. He would have been out then. Charles does an excellent job on the bench. Mysick stabs it in. Three seconds for Beardstown to try to throw at the length. Pena will come a little bit of pressure here. There's Hembro from half court, and there's their last attempt of the first half, which was a bad one for Beardstown, as Pena's Panthers have a big lead at 26 to 11. We'll come back at the Assembly Hall. One of your network sponsors is Case IH. Harvest time. You've got some strong helping hands and a combine to match. Case IH Axial Flow. It brings in crop that conventional combines leave behind and treats it more gently so you get top dollar. You see, with Case IH Axial Flow, you get a good harvest, along with all your good memories. Entertains at the Assembly Hall and Frank Bassoni along with Ken, Ken, Ken Butkovich. Let's get it right, huh, Coach? That's Back close. at the Assembly Hall where Pena is in the lead 26 to 11 at the half and everything went Pena's way. The three-point shooting, the inside game, the whole works. And it's just been a tough afternoon for the Beardstown Tigers who are in an encore performance here and are having a tough time getting the lid off. Well, I don't know. It's going to be awful tough to come back. Uh, I'm sure that they've had some ball games. They've been down this year. We know that they were down three with 17 seconds, but they're down 15 and it's awful tough. And uh, they've got to get the lid off the bucket. Uh, they played. I think they played well. I think they've passed the ball inside good. They've, they've made some bad passes, but they got the ball inside. They could not score when they got it in there. And that's the tough part about this game. You've got to do it when the opportunity arises. Is Beardstown quick enough to come back because they'll probably have to extend pressure now on the full court, and they have foot speed to do that? Well, they, they're, they're, 
big team. I'm, I'm sure that they've had to press before and they can press. That's not their game, but they're going to have to try to do something and, and they're going to have to pick up the tempo in it and they're going to have to take every opportunity they have. They're going to have to convert every time down the floor. They're going to have to do something positive. Their offense didn't break down entirely because they got a lot of layups. They just couldn't knock them in. Well, I thought they did a good job. You know, you hold a team at 26 points. You've done a pretty decent job in the first half, but their offense is not going to let their defense look good. And the guards for uh, Tana Panthers have had their way. Funneman has eight points, including a couple of three pointers. We're going to come back at the assembly hall with more. But now let's pause for these messages. Who makes the best quality American-made appliances? Whirlpool, who guarantees 100% customer satisfaction. Whirlpool, where can you get the best price and free delivery on Whirlpool appliances? Neil's the king of deals. One leading corn soil insecticide says to apply in pearl for the best rootworm control. And leading universities say you get the best rootworm control with a banded application. We agree because a T-band application of Lorsband 15G insecticide gives you the best of both. in furrow application and banded, you get the best control of rootworms and other damaging insects. T-band Lorsband 15G, max corn security. Turn to 19 for LA's most persistent medical examiner. Quincy's on the case weekday afternoons at 4 on WHOI. at Assembly Hall. I'm Jim Albrecht, and one of the principal le reasons that Pena is leading here in the first half was a good start by Mark Heaton, the son of the principal of Pena High School, and I know that as a father watching the game, you're, you're kind of twisted up inside, but he got him off to a good start by hitting three shots, and then Beardstown missed a lot of cripples inside. That's certainly true, and uh, I was glad to see Pena get off to a good start because uh, as of late, they've been a little tight in the early going, and uh, it seemed like they weren't awed by the uh, assembly hall today, and they got off to a good start. Well, the name Barry Heaton has had a lot of titles behind it. Right now, of course, you are the principal of Pena High School. You've been a coach there. You've been a player there. You're soon to be the superintendent there. Is there any other titles you can have before this is all over wait well, that sounds like enough to me but uh, uh, yeah I've, I've been uh, principal there and uh, am going to be the superintendent come July and uh, I coached there when I first came to Pena and uh, uh, didn't I didn't play there however I, I, I'm a native of Jacksonville Illinois. What about the basketball program? I know this is the first visit to the Elite Eight in 30 years. Made it to the Sweet 16 not too long ago. What does that mean not only to yourself and your son and the team, but to the people in the town? Our, our community is uh, fantastic in support of the team, and uh, you know they've, they've just supported the team all year long. Actually, we were here in 81. Uh, John Blackburn's team in, in 81 made it up here to the Elite Eight, so this is our second appearance in, the, in this decade, and we're real happy and real proud of, of the team and of Coach Strasburger. I know the coach would have a lot of reasons for his success, but watching it from the outside as you do, what are the keys to success to this painted team? I know the defense, it seems to start there. Actually, I think uh, our defense is real strong. In my opinion, the key to the success of this team is the fact that uh, they play as a team. We don't have any superstars on our team, but uh, they work well together and, and uh, all year long, they, they're very unselfish and uh, one night, one boy will, uh, will be hot, and the next night, somebody else, and they really are unselfish, and, and I think that's been the key to our success all year long. How has the town responded to the success? I know many times the town is behind its team no matter how it falls, but how's it going now? I think uh, fantastically. We, we've always had good support in Pena. Uh, we're real proud of our fans. Uh, we think we've got some of the best fans in the state, and they, uh, they support our team, and they have supported our team all along, whether we've been uh, winning or losing. We've, we've got real good support in Pena. Now, Barry, I know you've been a former coach. You've got a lead now at halftime. If you were the coach now, you know that Beardstown's, at least you get a gut feeling, they're not going to play as badly as they did in the first half. So what, what do you think the coach is in there telling the kids right now? I think he's going to try to probably uh, 
uh, keep pressure on him, and uh, I don't think he'll lay back. I don't think he'll try to hold the ball up. I think he'll just keep trying to run the offense and uh, and, and make our boys understand that they need to play the tough defense. And uh, and I'm sure he's going to remind them that Beardstown is going to is a better ball club than they've shown this first half, and that they uh, are capable of coming right back at us. Well, very good luck in your new job, and good luck now as a fan of Payne High School. Thank you very much. Been that, is, that is Barry Heaton, the principal of Payne High School. We'll come back with more from Assembly Hall. One of your network sponsors is the American Dairy Association of Illinois. Hi, Reg Riverside here. Oh, as the expert on hunting down by the river, oh, uh, I help the new Riverside men sell cars and chill a coffee. Bargains are fantastic here any season. We get great service and prices you can afford, plus nobody shoots holes in Riverside's bottom line. The best is Riverside. Riverside Chevrolet Oldsmobile, 129 chill a coffee. If you need a pet, have I got the pet for you. Meet Susie. She's an eight-month-old Sheltie mix, and she's just one of our pets of the week. Hi, I'm Brenda Lou Dunn. Tonight on Eyewitness News, I'll introduce you to Susie and other pets who really need you. Look for the Kroger Food Share Canathon bag in Friday's Journal Star. Fill this bag with food or cut out the coupon and mail it with your check and help us help our neighbors in need. The Beardstown Tigers are back on the court. They're down by 26 to 11 at halftime. And Rob Force had six points in the first half for the Tigers. Then Hamilton and Cramblett with two each and Morrow with one. And that was the whole shot. Joe Hamilton is a 13 and a half point per game scorer on the season. And Terry Morrow a 12 point force of 10. So Beardstown will have to get their shooting on track here in the second half, Coach. Well, if, if they could get started right here and shut paint it down about three or four times, maybe they could get back into this thing. They've got to do it. Right? Maybe they can't do it quick. It just seems like they have to. Four for 24, Beardstown 17 percent. 10 of 29, Pena 34. Free throws, three of four for Beardstown, four of six for Pena. Rebounding twice as many for the Panthers and turnover. Beardstown has five, only two for the Panthers. The, uh, your scoring leaders in the game, Mysick with seven, Heaton with seven, and Funneman eight balances Golden for Pena. Tidwell with four off the bench. Beardstown, as we mentioned, forced with six. Morrow with only one, Hamilton and Cramley with a couple of pieces. The, uh, really, uh, Pena has a shot outstanding from the field. I mean, just a normal game, but it's just uh, offensive. Uh, uh, Beardstown is broken down, and... Uh, it just uh, makes a bad start for him. I, unfortunately for that, it happens sometimes up here. You, you hate to see something like that happen because it, they played great all year, and I just hope they can come back out in the second half and play a good ball game. Beardstown shot four for 22. That's 18%. They average 46% from the floor on the season, and they were uh, 0 for 3 from the three-point line. Pena shot 10 three-pointers in the first half. Surprised me a little bit. Funneman hit a pair of them. Well, that's a lot of that's a lot of three-pointers for one half, but. Uh, if you make a couple of them, you know, it's great. 10 for 25 for Pena from the field. That's only 40%, but it's been good enough for a big advantage in the uh, early going in the assembly hall. There's a big crowd here, the biggest, of course, any of these young men except some of the, uh, the, the closest to the crowd last year for Beardstown. Uh, but it, the Pena Panthers, they say, their coach says they have a reputation of giving 110%, and they were ready to play when the bell rang. Well, they gave 125% the first half, I think. Mark Heaton at the guard, 14 with the ball as we start the second half of play. First possession could be important for Pena here now. That's one of the goals a lot of coaches have, score the first basket in each half. Funneman tries and does a three. Is that discouraging or is that discouraging? Which He's one? Outstanding <laughs> player, and it's both. Shot out of the corner by Hamilton. They come back and got the first one. That, that's a good sign for Beardstown. 29-13 in favor of Pena. A whole half of basketball to play at the Assembly Hall. Each side hit their first shot. Funneman runs. This is a man-to-man -man by the Tigers. Nice hands by Joe Hamilton, punching the ball out of bounds. I believe it's some kind of matchup defense right here. It looks like uh, Frank, I believe. Bob Hembro looking on. His team with a big uphill climb. Stop it into Heaton. And the rebound tapped away. Vermillion had some position and then lost it and a foul. He went to the boards and that caused the other guy to come in and give him a foul. But Pena was going to the boards again. 
Canis and Mysick, Coleman and Moss along the baseline, and their guards are very active. Hamilton is at the top. Rob Force on the left. Hamilton a try. Rebound, Doug Moss. Not very tall, but a tough kid, a good rebounder. He's always there. He good penetration. A stutter step. He goes all the way in for two. Great penetration again. Made that little crossover dribble and went right in there. Nine for Mark Heaton. 31-13, Pena. Beardstown looks inside. They lob to Chris Fritz. The ball still loose. Fritz has it. And a whistle. Jump ball. Possession arrow. To Beardstown. Bridgetown's lost to Chatham Glenwood, Springfield Calvary, Hamilton, and Pittsfield. Then they came back and beat Pittsfield a couple of times. There's Terry Morrow. They go to him. Fourth rebound, the left-hander. That was another rebound for Moss. Another good shot. It's only about eight, ten feet from the basket. It just didn't drop for him. So Pena in command. Travel. Start to move to the basket. Heat and walk. Turnover number three on Pena. It's a very clean game by the Panthers, only three turnovers. Both teams uh, haven't been a lot of fouling, although both are big and strong, but it's been a uh, pretty clean played ball game. Fritz tries to get open. Vermillion is, but doesn't take the shot. Morrow is on the right side. This is Hamilton. Nice rhythm jumper. Good ball player. Six for Hamilton. He's a finesse player, but he can shoot the lights out when he gets warmed up. There's your score. 540 to go. Beardstown's got a long way back. They're trying on defense now. This is Funneman wing right. Look at him move. Good one-on-one on one player. They double team him. Swing the ball around the defense. It's a matchup. Inside it goes. Mysick steps in, banks it off. Good low post player. Nice move to the basket. Strong move. Mysick with nine, he turned the right direction, right into the lane, and smacked it off the window. Force is on the baseline, Morrow is fouled. I want to say one thing about uh, Charles Strasburg for just one second. When their team warms up, they have that in their warm-up drill, inside post play. They warm up by throwing the ball inside, and kids make the good inside moves on the face. All their players do those same moves. Chris Kramlick came in from Beardstown, 44, 6'5", junior. And this is Terry Morrow, 6'5", and a senior. Morrow missed the free throw. He averages 11 and a half points and nearly eight rebounds a game. They've kept him away from the inside. He's had to play a little bit outside, and uh, he can't get inside to get him the ball. I, I know he's a good outside shooter, but he has to get inside to get some easy buckets for him. Gary Tidwell back in for the Panthers, and there's Morrow with only one. Had an outstanding tournament up there last year. Didn't he? 33-16 now with five minutes to play, third quarter. Frank Bassoni along with Coach Ed Butkovich and Art Kimball. The Assembly Hall for the Class A. Forreston and St. Elmo are next. Tonight, number one meets number two. Watsika will take on Pickneyville in our last game tonight. This is Funneman three. Wow. Off a close three. Pena but it went in and has whipsaw at Beardstown now. A 20-point advantage at 430. So you can shoot with some confidence with the lead, too. When you're behind like that and they put the three up there, it's awful discouraging. You notice how much easier it is to shoot the three-pointer when you're ahead? <laughs> Family gets the ball in the corner to Vermillion. Morrow turns. He goes all the way. Good move. Missed it. Crip. Inside rebound tapped away from Force to Pena. They had their hands on it two or three times. They couldn't come up with it. Funneman on the fly. Heaton with a pop. It's a three. Fouls on Scott Vermillion, I think, against Beardstown. On that last sequence, steps in, threw the ball cross court, then they come back on a reverse and got that three-point shot. Good move. Third foul on Vermillion. They lob in. Hamilton steals it. He's going to try to go all the way against Funneman. He missed. Force rebounds. And Vermillion rebounded and was fouled. And that's a typical 
That's a look at what the game's been like for Beardstown. It won't go down. All first half, the same thing. They get the second effort, the third effort, and they just can't drop in. They keep the ball. Just under four minutes to go, the third quarter. Morrow didn't look to shoot outside. He goes to the block. Hamilton swirls away from his man. Great pass. That's his shot. Morrow missed. Can't get it. The Tigers stay freezing. And Tidwell comes down. He spotted the baseline open. He went in, found his man on the... Moss for two. Beautiful pass. Beautiful pass. Exceptional teamwork. Kids really play well together. And Bob Hemro goes to the bench. Watch this play by the sophomore. Zip. And Moss is there. And he's going to try for three. Great assist. 22. Jason Brockschmidt, 5'9", junior, in for the Tigers. And Vermillion goes out. I don't think they can wait too much longer to go to full court. I think they're going to have to try something here. Moss missed the free throw, and Brock Schmidt in for a second, grabs the rebound. They may come up with it that last substitution. Morrow. Beardstown would rather play a more patient game, and when they're way behind like they are, and when they're ice cold, they can't. Inside it goes, and the layup is down. Let's see, it doesn't count. Maybe it's fouled before he got, got it in. Good pass by Hamilton again. Doug Moss picked up the foul. One of the things Beardstown will have to remember is they won 29 games last year. They won 25 games again this year. Their program is solid. It's one of those days. We've all been through it. Funneman kicks the ball out of bounds, and Beardstown keeps it. It's unfortunate that it happens down here. This is Rob Force. Looks in. But that's what makes the game interesting in basketball. You just never know. Barack Schmidt tried a three. Rebound is tipped out. Pena has it. Very smart play by Funneman that time. He tipped the ball out to an area, and then both players went and got it. He knew that he couldn't get the rebound himself, but he just tipped it there. Tidwell is rejected by Morrow. And now there's timeout on the court. 2.51 to go in the third. We're at the Class A quarterfinals, and we'll be back. One of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. People who care what they eat are learning some surprising things about calories. One surprising thing is that the white meat you see here contains fewer calories than anything else on the plate. But the most surprising thing is that this white meat is pork. Pork. The other white meat. Vote for legal experience. Vote for business and governmental experience. Vote for William E. O'Brien, Republican candidate for Peoria County Circuit Clerk. O'Brien, the right choice. Having a warehouse sale on Admiral Party Ice and Alamo Refrigerators through this Saturday only at Neal's, the King of Deals, in downtown Pekin. On Mars. Sexually explicit scenes and dialogue. Blue movies? Tonight at 10.30 after 19 Eyewitness News Update. Hey, now with the basketball and the commanding lead against Beardstown. Eaton with it. Thought about that three, though, didn't he? Plenum tried it and got it. But you can see what it, Heaton penetrated in and then kicked back outside. Just like it was set up. It's five three-pointers for Funneman. And he's been a load in the game. They told us he was an all-stater coming into the tournament. And you can see why. He has 16. He showed it so far this afternoon. Beardstown has been in some low-scoring games. Uh, they only scored 45 in their first loss, but you look across their scores, and they've gotten 80s and 70s consistently all year long. And they're having this day. Here's Joe Hamilton, a 71% foul shooter. The touch won't go. Paying again, excellent block out on the free throw. Watch Funneman. He's got such good athletic ability. He's loose. He's moving all over the floor. Heaton's moving all over the floor. With, with the uh, 
the coaches steps on in there it gives those two gentlemen a lot of freedom to move around offense they don't have to handle the ball as much of course uh, you're talking about the guards Heaton and Funiman yeah. and then Tidwell comes off the bench and he frees them up when Tidwell's in there he handles the ball and lets those other two guys move around offensively they'll be all over the floor yeah you watch them out there now remember this is a young man who's a sophomore at 25 in the super and Hamilton strips him gives it to Brock Schmidt on the fly back to Hamilton and the Tigers ran a fast break it was a good pass it was a good foul too they kept him from scoring They're gonna put him at the free throw line follows on Gary Tidwell we were talking about the 2 12 to go in the third quarter Pena and I know Charles Strasburg has to pinch himself leads 41 to 16 now there's time out on the court we're going to come back at the assembly hall one of your network sponsors is country company the day Tom bought his new car he knew it would start declining in value month after month so he added the keeper coverage to his country company's auto insurance Two years later, the car was totaled, unrepairable. But instead of giving him only the used car value, country companies bought him a brand new one, same make and model, even though it cost more than the original. The keeper for just a few dollars more. You've got the country company. Looking for betting? Come to the professional betting liquidators. Mattress and box springs, all name brands, just $38. Save 60%. Bunk beds, just $69. Brass and white day beds, $99. Genuine brass beds, 50% off. Adjustable bed frames, $12. Bedding liquidators, mattress sale. No one sells for less. $1,500, instant credit, and no payments or interest for three months. Don't miss this sale. Bedding liquidators with stores all around town. Joe Hamilton goes to the foul line for Beardstown. They were here a year ago. Last year's center, Matt O'Hara, who's grown now from 6'7 to 6'9, is playing at Culver Stockton. He's here visiting, is doing a good job there. Program. He's having a great year over there. Free throw by Hamilton is good. Hamilton had the great honor of playing here as a sophomore, and he's back again. And, of course, he'll be on the hunt next year to make it three in a row. Yes, O'Hara picked up a lot of weight. He said he really worked hard on the heavy rope this past offseason and really got a lot stronger. And a very good student. Two points for Hamilton there. 41-18 now. Beardstown's lowest point total of the year, 45. Punneman handling the ball. Down to the two-minute mark in the third quarter. Tidwell rolls around his man, spins it up. Hamilton spears it three on two. The Tigers run. Brock Schmidt on the move, put it up with the left hand and got called for traveling. They're down that far, they can't afford any violation. Two exceptional officials on this ball game. I've had the pleasure of seeing Spriggs and Preston work many times and uh, do a great job. Up ahead, that's Doug Moss, 24, free to Tidwell. What did one of them say, Art? Uh, there, there, there aren't any questionable calls when they were asking about if you have questionable calls. But That's right. Both of them are in such great condition physically. Spriggs is, uh, just flies down the floor, and so does Preston. I'm, I'm amazed at how well they cover. I've seen them several times this year. Oh, you can run with them. This is Brock Smith. Three! Uh, I can't run with butt covers. Uh, <laughs> say, uh, these guys. Both officials look like they're in excellent shape. Beardstown putting on some pressure. They trail 41-21 at the 120 mark in the third. And now Pena may run a little clock here. They may go for one. Funneman turns away from his man. Beardstown gambling, trying to get to the ball. And a foul on Rob Force. Unfortunately, Pena fumbled the ball, but it was on the floor, and they, Beardstown picked up a foul. That's how things have been happening for him all afternoon. It's incredible the way teams can just go cold in this game, isn't it? Happens to every ball club. As Ed, as Ed mentioned, you hope it doesn't happen down here. Tidwell will send it in against Morrow. Heaton goes to the corner, and Moss comes outside. Funneman is free. It's a three. Meistic rebounds, steps in, and missed it. Hamilton rebounds and runs. 55 seconds in the third. Hamilton penetrates, pushed it all away. Goes to goes one. One end to the other. Ten points for Hamilton, who's answering the call. And a foul immediately on the Tigers with 48 seconds to go. Beardstown is falling back within 18. 
I know they'd like to get to 15 or under for the fourth. Watch Hamilton. Here's Joe in the open court. Oh, he's got that head moving as he was around him. Nice crossover move here. Great move. Oh, sweet. And nice work with the cameras there. 41 for the Tigers, Sean Hembro, 6-1 senior checks in. Oro's riding with three fouls, and uh, they're going to make a run. They're going to need him in the fourth quarter. Tidwell, just a great foul shooter. Been three out of three. All year. He was 16 out of 17 in the Super, and he's over 80%. In the Super, they tried to foul other people, but they never could get the other people to have the ball when they found it. And for, fortunately for Pena, he always had the ball. Pena back in the lead by 20. The Panthers have been very impressive. Baseline. Blocked. Pembroke's shot was thrown away. Look who blocked it. Runneman. The long arm. He's around the ball all the time. He has been impressive here today, hasn't he? Very. The All-Stater, F-U-N-N-E-M-A-N. Brock Schmidt tries a three. Good rebound, Hamilton. His shot is blocked by Funneman. Again. He continues to be impressive here today. As that song goes, <laughs> this couldn't happen again. <laughs> he has those ropes for arms. Shot force outside. Rebound, Funneman. Nearly a pain of player in the net. 25 seconds in the third. Funneman is triple teamed and held. He got in some big traffic back there. As Beardstown knows, they have to put pressure on the ball. Follows on Rob Force, 6'4", senior. It may not happen on his free throw, but Funneman has a different rotation sometimes on his free throw, and his ball goes a little bit to the right sometimes. It, like I said, it may not happen on this one, but uh, in the sectional, he was shooting, he missed some uh, close one-on-ones down the line against uh, Springfield Calvary. 23, Rob Newenham. Checks in, 6'1", senior for Beardstown, and Force sits down. Pena was two up in the sectional against Calvary with 17 seconds. Funneman makes a steal. Runs the clock down to 12. Then when they fouled him, he puts a two in that ice the game for him. Your area was very strong this year, wasn't it, Ed? Had some good ball clubs. Stola must there. have been a super team. They were super. Real quick, strong. Funneman missed. They have a 20. Very aggressive team. Tuscola was. Third quarter has 19 seconds to go, and Pena leads by 21. Butkovic oh. won 20 this year, Frank. You know that? Quietly. Yeah. <laughs> Very quietly. <laughs> great year. Oh, great program. Down to 15 seconds. Take and go by Hembro. Newenham has come in with Brock Schmidt and Hembro to give the Tigers some speed. He made a good move. Outstanding fake went up, and the ball slipped right out of his hand. 10 seconds to go. Hamilton to Brock Schmidt. Shot is missed by Hembro. Rebound to Pena. They throw it the other way. Funneman didn't know how many, how much time. He thought there was a little less than there was. And Beardstown will throw it back the other direction. You're a lot of mistake once in a while, aren't you? I think that's his first in the 80s. First in this quarter, I'll tell you that. Hembro lets it go, and that's the end of three quarters of play with Pena in the lead over Beardstown in the first quarter final. We'll be back with the final eight minutes. One of your network sponsors is Case IH. Get ready for more comfort. Magnum comfort. Magnum means more. With better visibility in an all-new cab. With more window area than the leading competitor. See 17% more. Feel 100% better. New cabs, plus new engines and power shift transmissions. All new, all Magnum. Magnum tractors. Tractors that will do more for you. Penry. 
and they're visiting again in the assembly hall. The Pena Panthers, who haven't lost in two years at home, have been at home in the assembly hall the first three quarters, Ed Butkovich. So far. They start the fourth with the ball. Beardstown picked up the pace the last quarter. Unfortunately, so did Pena. It was 26 to 11 at the half. And then Pena went 18 points. Beardstown with 12 in the third quarter. Doug Moss for Pena is 24, and that's Punnaman. He's been a big story in the game. Keaton stops and goes. Look at the triple team on the ball. Beardstown has New and Ham 23, and Brock Schmidt 22. Along with Hembro, all off the bench, trying to put pressure on the ball. Cramblett off the bench. They've got one starter in, Joe Hamilton. Keaton barges down the lane to the right and shoots. Penetration again. Strong move. Right in the defense's face. Put it in. 11. Again, I said, penetration very, very well. Keaton with 11. Brock Schmidt on the move. Newman Ham had it snapped away from him. Two block shots in a row there. Heaton on the hunt. The distance and held. Did a good job. Took it all the way again. Penetration. Mark Heaton, 14. Funneman, 30. And Tidwell, 12. There's very few high school teams are going to have three guards better than that. I, I believe I'm not positive about him, but I think he uh, started uh, ever since the second half of his sophomore year. And he's uh, really been an outstanding player in their program down there. At 6-1, he averages six rebounds a game, and Funneman averages nearly seven rebounds a game. And so they're doing something other than shooting. I hope he does it again, but the young players out there watch him. He had great follow-through on his last shot. I hope he keeps it up there again. Yes. He did. A pair for Heaton. Good wrist action, that right hand. Good follow-through. Three out of four free-throwing for Heaton. Hamilton trying to answer. Brock Schmidt tries a three. Beardstown's got to go to their threes now some. Well, they're going to three. You said earlier in the game they took 16 in one game. They're going to have to pick it up here, but uh, I believe it's uh, a little bit too late. Payne is being pressured on the full court. Funneman has double team. He's out of trouble now and fumbled the ball and dribbled it. That's double dribble. Seven turnovers on Payne of that guy. Frank, you might want to mention something here that I think it might be uh, very, very important to people back in Birdstown. Oh, yes. Rena Hembro, the, uh, the young lady who's the daughter of Coach Bob Hembro, is the top point getter in the state for the Class A All-State team over here keeping the book for Birdstown. Father's got to be proud to have her along. There again, that last interception was by Funneman again. He's everywhere. Pena in white from the Mid-State Conference. Their enrollment of 495 are all here. Nice move by Heaton. He traveled. But when he was traveling and fall out of bounds, he looked back in the court and was going to get ready to pass it to somebody. For Beardstown, 15. Pat Patterson, a 5'7 junior, comes in. There's your bookkeeper. There's Raina. Good picture. Thank you very much. 5'8 guard, average 16 and a half points a game. Pat Patterson getting Assembly Hall experience, a junior. Beardstown, it's been a long afternoon, but it's been a great season. Hamilton fires. Rebounding foul on Shane Hembro over the back. Very few teams can go back in their history and say they've been at the Assembly Hall two years in a row. You know, that's interesting. Uh, they uh, uh, had four starters return from that team last year. They were uh, fourth, of course. They were 29 and five. Community located uh, west of Springfield, and they've had a great following again at the Assembly Hall. Charlie Strasburger said to me before the game, he said, at least we have the right colors down here, orange and blue, and it's worked out well for them. They felt at home, haven't they? Hamilton goes all the way in, gives it to Cramblett. Nice save by the great Tigers. Play. Ooh, traveling nearly. Funneman picked it off anyway. Eight turnovers against Beardstown. Funneman's been in on several of them. He's got the ball. Well, he's a solid player. Tidwell, another one, punches it on the block to Heaton. 
Watch the pit well, boy. Every time he gets the ball, he puts it in his triple threat position. He's ready to drive. He's ready to pick that ball back up and shoot the jumper. Or ready to kick it off. And Payne needs uh, credit from Mysick, Coleman, and Moss along the baseline too. They've worked hard for position and done a good job. As Heaton goes to the free throw line, and Beardstown is going to get Larry Moore, a 6'2 junior, off the bench. 190 pounder, and Cramblett will come out. Cramblett, a junior. Tell you, Beardstown's got some players next year back. Hamilton and Cramblett, just two. Heaton touched it in. That time, Heaton drew the hand back a little bit too quick. The other two times, he kept the ball up there. I hope he follows through a little bit better this time. He's four out of five in the game from there. Larry Kevin up there. Did you see Great that? music. Yeah. He did it that last time. On the board for Pena. 23 for the Tigers. There's six minutes to go now in the game. Will be followed by Forreston against St. Elmo. Then tonight, Lena Winslow against Walter Lutheran and Watsika against Pickneyville. Another pickoff. Backside man on that zone. Picked it off again. Boss did a good job. Kidwell finds Heaton along the baseline. He goes all the way in and got it. I think both of those players are established herself today here. Newenham helps out in the back and Hamilton brings it up. Heaton with 17 in the game. Here's Patterson's first to try at three. Rebound to Hembro, and now the Tigers lose it. Pena brings it. I may be mistaken. I think the Heaton boy uh, received a uh, four-team uh, IBCA All-Star here just last evening. Here he comes again, Mark Heaton. Awful close. His foot was on the line, though. It's a two. He's had an outstanding game. And he had 18 in the Super. He's topped that with 19 now, under five minutes. Newenham is 23. Hembro 41 on the left. Here's a steal by Funiman. Uh -oh. It's a clinic. Oh, nice move. Here comes Funiman. I think he, he might have had his signs on a, a stuff shot there, but... Uh, he was a little bit off balance and still made a good layup. Funiman. That's 20 for Funiman. At 39 in their backcourt, and here comes Tom Funiman again. Up ahead to Moss, all the way for the layup. And Payne is roaring. Good teamwork. I think Funiman just signaled for the coach to take him out of the ball game. He's awful tired. He's played a great ball game. A 58 to 23 lead for Payne. Newenham, a three, doesn't go. Rebound, Moss. The Panthers are in the semifinal. Four minutes in the fourth quarter, and they haven't scored the fourth quarter. There's down. Do you think that maybe the Painter players would all like to have this video in their video collection? They're going to have it. I'll bet on that. They there goes Funiman. copies of this, will they? Look at Charles. <laughs> Tom Funiman, the All-Stater. Gave my guess to make a coach happy, can I? A standing O. Well, Charles dresses pretty good, doesn't he? He coaches are pretty resplendent down here. Great pass. Mysick tried it, and it was blocked by Moore. A nice entry by Tidwell yes, with the ball. Charlie Strasberger from Western Kentucky University of 1969. And now Beardstown wants timeout with 3.57 to go in the game. We'll come back. Stay with us. One of your network sponsors, Illinois Pork Producers. These meals may look familiar, but there's something about them you don't know. You know they're old favorites. You know they're delicious. And you know they're made with white meat. What you don't know is that the white meat they're made with isn't chicken. It's pork, because even an old favorite can use a new twist. Enjoy the best of times when the all-new Ice Capades hits the ice March 23rd through 27th at the Peoria Civic Center. Two dollar discounts are available for youth and seniors all nights except opening night, sponsored by WHOI. A treat for the whole family, featuring the world of Teddy Ruxpin and four-time national and Olympic champions Kitty and Peter Carruthers. The Ice Capades, March 23rd through 27th. Get your tickets now at the Civic Center box office or all Ticketmaster outlets. Call 673-3200.
The first semifinalist is settled there with 3.57 to go in the fourth as Pena will advance. Forreston, 28-2, will play St. Elmo, 27-2, next this afternoon. And then tonight, Lena Winslow, 26-3, Walter Lutheran, 29-3. Then number two, Watsika against number one, Pickneyville, following it up. Kevin Meisick, a 62% foul shooter, knocks in the free throw, and the Panthers have a 59-23 advantage. I believe they're going to pick up a little foul in here, aren't they? That's 10 for Meisick. You bet they'll pick up some following. And Vermillion rebounds back in for the Tigers. So is Morrow back in. Fritz. This is Jeff Schultz in now. Fritz puts the ball on the floor. It goes out of his hands. And a whistle. That was Scott Vermillion he's looking at there. And a foul on Pena. It's on Gary Tidwell. His third. Will be Chris Fritz coming to the free throw line, the 6'2 senior. Good and solid year, averaging eight points and five rebounds. You guys keep those elbows tucked in. Well, uh, Pena kind of reminds a little bit of Chrisman the way they move that ball around. Hey, yeah, very similar. I just heard Bill Springs say, You guys keep those elbows tucked in on that free throw. <laughs> Rebound to Pullman for the Panthers. In other words, he's saying, I'm watching you, fellas. Dave Ward is in for Pena, number 44, a 5'11 senior. So is Travis Sims there, number 20. Woolard is 44. Look at Tidwell go down the lane. Nice pass to Pullman. He's blocked and a foul on the Tigers. Uh, Travis come in in the uh, sectional game down there against uh, Williamsville and had a real outstanding ball game. Uh, they were down 10 in the first half, in the first quarter, and he come in the ball game and give him a little spark. He had a three-point goal against him. He played real well offensively. He played quite a bit down there in that first game of the uh, second half. Pullman, number 50, hit a jumper to give his team a lead by one in the super. And they held that lead, and he missed that free throw. 6'4", junior. He's only 16 years old. Put that one down. Got his first point, and Pena's got 60. 60 to 24 with 3.20 to go in the game. Fritz for the Tigers of Beardstown. Schultz is number 20 right there. Morrow is outside. That's a long shot for Terry Morrow. Three-point range. Not good. Rebound loose on the floor. Bodies go down. It takes a while to get the assembly hall court cleaned up here. And Payne is going to get another couple of reserves in. 34 for the Panthers. Jeff Mysick, 6'1", sophomore, Kevin's brother. And there goes Kevin. Had a great ball game. Good game. Good offensive boards, good defensive boards. Had a super game. He's a tough kid, strong nose for the ball. Good rebounder. Schultz enters the ball to Fritz, who missed. Tried to get it back. Payne has it picked off by Schultz. And Payne has got it. They send it up the court. Dave Woolard in trouble. Stolen. Rob Force for the Tigers. Two and a half on the clock. Shot outside by Schultz. Bank three. Is that what they put the bank board up here for? <laughs> well, when you play a horse, you got to call him. Tidwell goes around his man. Off balance shot, knocked it in. Right up in that face again. Good ball player. Gary Tidwell. Tidwell with eight in the game. Another famous basketball name in Illinois. Remember Tidwell with Aaron years and years and years ago? Frank doesn't, but I do. So do I. <laughs> so does Frank. There you go. <laughs> Force missed. Rebound is loose, and Pullman forces it down. And a foul on Beardstown. Chris Fritz. There's a very happy Payne bench. I don't blame him. It's their 26th victory of the season. When I first started in broadcasting in Illinois, Ted Well was the talk of Southern Illinois. Played for uh, Lee Kabuti, didn't he, at Heron? I think so. For Payne 22, Todd Holthouse comes on, and Gary Tidwell goes out. Tidwell is all but a starter. He plays plenty of minutes, big score, great ball handler. This is Pullman. I think he averaged something like eight or nine points a ball game for him this year. 
Coleman missed. I think he started playing after about the fifth or sixth ball game this year, quite a bit for Charles. Fritz whips the ball inside to Moore. Larry Moore. And his first two, the assembly hall. Now a minute 35. Don't forget Beardstown and St. Elmo coming up next. Two teams with only four losses between them. Woolard launched one. Fritz on the move is stripped. Good steal. Center court by Travis Sims, who is fouled. Foul is on Jeff Schultz. Lest Frank confuse you, Beardstown does not have to play a doubleheader. Forreston <laughs> will oppose St. Elmo in the next game. Well, I think right now, I think Beardstown would like to play a doubleheader. <laughs> you bet. This is Fritz. Flair by Sims. Crossover dribble coming again. We didn't find quite finish it. 5'8 junior. Missed the free throw. He's going to put this one down. He wants to get in the book. <laughs> All right. I know. 61% successful from there. Oh, yeah. Got the shooter's roll that time, honey. <laughs> and for Beardstown, Pat Patterson comes back. 5'7 junior. Pena in command. Have been since early. They set the 2-3 zone. Send it inside to Larry Moore. Doesn't get the roll. Fritz tries it. Frustration on Fritz's face. Feel sorry for him. Sims. And Willard outside. Willard tries to go inside as the ball tipped away from him. It's on the floor. Nearly tied up. No whistle. Still none. And Moore comes out with it for the Beardstown Tigers. Under 50 seconds. It's been a tough, long, nightmarish afternoon for the Tigers, but a wonderful year for them and a return to the Assembly Hall in the final eight. For Pena, 52. Dave Eddy, a 6'3 sophomore, 15 years old, 6'3 and 190. Their inability to score early inside when they missed those easy shots has just led to some frustration early. They just never were be able to regroup. They just never could regroup. Sims went out. Now the reserves in for Pena. Holt House outside. Woolard with it. Nice pass. Nice rebound inside to Moore. 20 seconds and Beardstown will take it down for the, one of the last few times here. Morrow goes behind the back and sends it home. 63-31, 8-7. The clock melts away. Beardstown with the ball will get another shot, perhaps. Morrow is going to try it at the buzzer for three. Count it. Unfortunately for Beardstown, Morrow probably saying to himself, I wish we could have done that just a little bit earlier to get off to a good start. But it didn't happen. My hat's off to Charlie Strasburger. My hat's off to Bob Monroe, too. There they are. Strasburger on the left as Pena has advanced to the semifinals with a big 63, the 34 win. The Panthers, 26 and three, will play tomorrow. And there you see Beardstown, who goes out closing their season at 25 and five. We'll be back at the Assembly Hall. Let's take time out for this message on the IHSA Network. A great newspaper should do more than give its local readers the latest sports. Questionable call last night. It should give fans everywhere the same story. Bunk call last night. The Chicago Tribune does that every morning with editions printed by satellite. That call last night stopped. So everything you read is hot off the presses. Whether you're in Chicago. This thing's like a rock. Or the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. What do you expect? It came all the way from Chicago. You may not always get the freshest bagels, but you always get the freshest sports. We was robbed. Overweight is more than a state of body. It's a state of mind. Well, I did my homework and discovered Physicians Weight Loss Centers. It's not one of those tasteless diets. 
their diet lets you eat real food, and it's professionally supervised and nutritionally sound. What's more, they're with you every day, every pound of the way. They help you keep it off, too. I feel so good now. Sure hope it doesn't go to my head. Call the center nearest you today. Be a shot clock in, college, in high school basketball that follows that well, three-pointer? there has been some talk. I don't know. It might be a few years down the road, but uh, the way the game went today, we, we didn't need a shot clock. Uh, maybe in some games we might need one, but today we didn't need one. That's for sure. You know, I wonder sometimes, Coach, how you coaches in high school can uh, sit on the bench with the bench decorum rule. You're not allowed to get up. I don't know how you can do it. We can't. <laughs> some of us don't. No, uh, we, we have to stay there, and uh, unfortunately, we've tried to get the rules committee to change a little bit. And they haven't. We try to get them to do some modifications. Some states around our areas have modified it just a little bit, and we hope that maybe in time it'll be modified, uh, at least to give us a chance to get up there once in a while. I think the referees know when we're getting on them. They can call it to you. I think so. I'll tell you, the fans really responded last year when we made a call on the three-point shot, and they responded in favor of it, and it's been an excitement in high school basketball all year, and the rules change. The game keeps up with the time. It's going to get better as it goes along. Pena has advanced to the semifinals, and we're coming up on the next game this afternoon. It's going to be St. Elmo against Forreston. St. Elmo uh, with only uh, two losses on the season, and Forreston with two 29 and 28 victories. We'll come back tonight. We'll have Lena Winslow against Walter Lutheran. Walter Lutheran rated third and second in polls, and then one and two, depending on whose poll you look at. Pickneyville, number one, against Watsika, number two, in our last game this evening. Any picks in any We've of these got games? some great games coming up. I don't want to pick. I'm going to make people mad. I'll just wait till it happens and say that's the team I had picked. Okay. I think we're ready now to uh, go down to listen to the band directed by Harry Penry. These are the Four of Wolves. Beardstown coming up next. Forreston 28 and 2 against St. Elmo 27 and 2. And we'll be back with that. Now let's pause for these messages. <laughs> 